it's really just a, like one breath, one step, one minute at a time. Um, they will be making decisions as they are forced to make them, um, but right now they are really in shock. 26-year-old Sarah Zent, her five-year-old son Carter, three-year-old son Ashton, and two-year-old daughter Aubrey. On the night we learned the names of the victims killed in the fort yesterday, a family spokesperson talks with us about how the rest of the family is trying to come together to try and cope. Good evening, everyone. I'm Linda Jackson. Tom Powell has the evening off. Investigators say a blood-stained knife, a stolen credit card, and the suspect's own words are key pieces of evidence tying 21-year-old Cohen Hans Barron to the murders tonight. And we continue our team coverage for you. Fort Wayne's NBC reporter Corinne Rose talked with the spokesperson, and you'll hear more from her in just a moment. But first, Fort Wayne's NBC reporter Jeff Newmeyer begins our team coverage with information we have learned about the violent crime scene on Gay Street and whether the death penalty might be a factor in all of this. And we want to let you know this is disturbing information. Hans Barron did not provide Fort Wayne detectives working a quadruple homicide case on Gay Street with an admission of guilt but authorities are convinced they have plenty of evidence to tie the man to the violent slayings of a young mother and three of her children. Court documents say police were summoned to the home of Sarah Zent in the 2900 block of Gay Street Wednesday morning. And when they showed up, a man and woman yelled, he killed them, they're dead. Police found Zent kneeling by a bed in a downstairs bedroom and two young boys, ages five and three, and a two-year-old girl lying face down on the same bed. They were dead, and it was clear they'd each been cut in the neck. Police reviewed video from surveillance cameras at nearby Whitney Young School, showing lights going off in the home around 5.30 a.m. and a black F-150 pickup driving away. A witness told police he saw Hans Barron behind the wheel, telling officers it was his truck and the suspect didn't have permission to take it. Hans Barron's mother told police he showed up at her house at 6.15 a.m. Wednesday asking for money talking and acting crazy, she said, telling her he'd been shot in the stomach. She told him to leave. Court papers say later detectives located what they referred to as digital intelligence showing Barron at a Lafayette, Indiana apartment complex. Police served a search warrant and found him with a knife that had a red stain on the blade. Earlier, documents indicate he'd called his stepmom, a call that was recorded by authorities, and during the call, he told her he was present when the four slayings happened but made a vague reference to somebody else committing the crimes, asking his stepmom at one point to contact a Chicago lawyer on his behalf that would charge $100,000, he said, to defend him for something like this. Police say after taking Hans Barron back to Fort Wayne, they found Zent's credit card in his wallet. The documents identified Barron as the woman's boyfriend. It's very early in the investigation, almost certainly too early for a decision by Allen County Prosecutor Karen Richards about whether she'll seek the death penalty. Because the case involves the deaths of small children and the violent nature of the murders, it would allow for a death penalty filing. We spoke to former Adams County Prosecutor Dan Sigler, who discussed death penalty cases can take a tremendous amount of time and energy to pursue. Someone convicted of a capital crime can sit on death row for a long time, he said, and it can be very costly for a county. Even though a case might otherwise qualify as a death penalty case, it may be a prosecutor decides that that's not warranted because of what would be involved. Personally, I committed to that I would, if necessary, file a death penalty case if the facts justified it. And I think most prosecutors are of that mind. The last defendant in Allen County to face the death penalty, Marcus Dansby, who killed three people in 2016 and an unborn child, he pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 300 years. I'm Jeff Newmeyer reporting.